hello everybody welcome back to another video and today we're gonna try and explain yet another way how to make a bit more complicated rug now this would be the third video that I'm uh, doing that I'm gonna try to explain how to model a more complex rug the previous two videos basically went over how to create a more simplistic rug by using a displacement map and the second one was by using uh, hair and fur modifiers so if you haven't seen those yet I'm gonna leave a link in the description so you can feel free and go ahead and see them. so for today I want to approach or actually explain how would you approach a project where you would have to model some kind of a rug that has a bit more than just fibers it what I mean by this is well I went over on Google and basically found an image like this one. So I'm going to use this for my carpet for today. Now, since I wanted to have a bit more control over how my carpet is going to act, I went over and in Photoshop, I made a seamless texture from this. And this is, it looks basically like this one. So this tiles perfectly. It doesn't have any problems. And then the other thing I did was I made this map. So as you can see, if we put them uh, next to overlap, we have basically a mask, which is going to cover the inner part of the rug. But you're going to see why do we need this mask later on in the video. For now, I'm just going to close this. And here is my scene as it is. So basically, it's just the same scene that we used in the previous two videos. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I want to apply a diffuse texture to my map. So I'm going to press my material editor, apply this white material I have here. And in the diffuse, I'm simply going to pull my rug seamless texture right here. Now, as it is right now, I don't like it because the tiling is too big. So let's try and do it two by three yeah this should work all right so we have this now the way that we're gonna make this is simply gonna go over to the create tab from here from the roll down menu we're gonna choose v-ray and now we have to select our base or our rug and press on the v-ray fur as soon as you do this you're gonna get something looking like this all right so what is this? Well, this is basically the V-Ray fur, uh, v -ray fur option that comes prepacked with V-Ray. The way it works is it applies uh, this effect with all of these strands, as you can see. And before we continue anything else, let's just give it a quick render so we can see what we have here. So as soon as the render is done, we can see a lot of craziness going on. We have a lot of these fibers and they're all, <laughs> they're all pink. All right, so the reason why they're pink is they inherit the color that's coming from here. So from the V-Ray Fur, on the uh, right side, you have this square. When you click it, you can choose a placeholder color. So it inherits that color. Now, in our case, since we wanted to follow the texture we, that we have on our carpet, what we have to do is select our V-Ray Fur, open the Material Editor, and apply that material to the selection. So just click on the assign material to selection. So by doing this, and now if we re-render, we're gonna get a different result. So let's see it. And as we can see, the craziness is still here, but now at least the color is more or less right. All right, so let's see how we can better control this. And let's see the parameters that we have that come with V-Ray. Now, the first thing you can see about the parameters is it first is telling you what is the source object. It's my box 01, or this is basically our carpet. So it's gonna grow from that object. The second one is the length of the fibers. So we can control exactly how long these fibers are gonna be. So let's try, like, I think about a length of about two centimeters would fit, fit just right for a carpet. So again, I'm gonna, change one thing show you the render the render uh, results you guys can see exactly what it does so i'm going to re-render one more time and as we can see now the fibers are much smaller and they well they resemble small worms 
which is not ideal, but hey, we are starting to get there. So the first thing that, uh, that is controlled here is the length. The second one is the thickness. So we have ex uh, control, exact control over how thick these fibers are gonna be. So let's make them a bit thinner. So we're gonna go 0 0.1 and let's re-render. Okay, our rug is starting to get a bit thinner. Now, the next thing that we can control here is the gravity. The gravity is basically controlling the amount of bending we're gonna be seeing here, which is exactly the next thing that's controlled here with the bend. So the gravity is the strength at which these things are gonna bend. So if I put it at zero, we're gonna get a lot of these fibers just being normal to their, whoops, normal to their, uh, original surface on which they are uh, placed all right so let's zoom out again now we have zero gravity which means all of these fibers should stand tall so let's see it and as we can see it now all of these fibers are more or less straight all right uh, before we continue on with the other options, I want to address one. Um, I want to address the elephant in the room, and that is the fact that we have way too few fibers. So adding more of these fibers is fairly easy here. All you have to do is just scroll down where it says distribution over here. Uh, you have two options: per face and per area. Now, per face option works great if you have a certain selection in which you would like to have your of very fur up here and in others not in this case we want it to be on the entire object so we're going to stick with our per area distribution so instead of two let's go at one so that was 0 0.2 i'm putting it at one and i'm going to re-render now let's see how how many fibers are we going to get now with uh per area of one we can see we have more strands but in all honesty i think i'm going to need more so i'm going to try another one with this time around i'm going to put 10 see how this pans out for us all right now we're starting to get somewhere if we zoom in we're going to notice that this is actually starting to look like a rug now so now the other thing that you can notice here is that even though we have our normals or the gravity set to zero and the bend is at one. We have some of these bending differently from the others. And from what we can see here, some of these are longer than the others. So what gives? Or why is that ha this happening? If we have uh, our length set at two centimeters, our thickness at 0 0.1, why are some different than the others? Well, the reason for this is one of the great things about V-Ray Fur, and that is the uh, uh, option you have that in here, you can choose to have a variation of your option. So with the uh, direction variation of 0 0.2, that means 20% of the strands that are in here are gonna be different from the options that we changed here. Uh, the length variation, that means like 20% are going to be uh, either taller or shorter strands. So we can choose to get this to a higher, like let's try it with 80%. This is going to make it so it's a lot different. So again, let's re-render. And as we can see, we have a lot different results. So that means that 80% of these strands are a random length and only 20% are keeping their length of two centimeters. So I'm gonna put this back to 0 0.2. So we only have like 20% deviation from the original size. And then the thickness variation works pretty much the same way. It just uh, takes the thickness and then uh, makes 20% of those fibers uh, be different. So all in all, when you're making something like this, it all boils down to how much control you have over what you're making. So it, uh, the more control you have, the better it is for you. And now, since we're at the topic of control, we're gonna uh, jump over to what I consider to be uh, V-Ray first strongest uh, point, and that is the actual uh, utiliza uh, utilization of maps to control the parameters. Now, what does this mean? Uh, 
Well, if you remember when I started the video, I showed you guys a map I made, or actually a mask, this one. We have basically the same texture like this one, but you have black lines where this is in the middle, or white lines. So masks can be used in V-Ray Fur to control multiple things. So the first thing here that you can control is the bend direction. And then you have an initial direction map. And you're gonna notice two things that on uh, the right side you have RGB here and RGB here. That means that uh, you can use RGB colored maps and it's going to actually go ahead and read through the colors like it would read an, a normal map. Unlike the other uh, or the rest of these map which are monochrome so it can read only black and white. All right, so the first of uh, first map I would like to cover from these maps is the length map. So what we can do here is quite simple. I'm going to open up my material editor one more time, and in here I'm actually just going to drop and well, let's go get material bitmap. I'm gonna close this. Now we have a bitmap in here, and in it I'm going to. Uh, pull my mask so this is the texture I'm pu pulling in now I, I need to make sure that I have the same tiling as I have it on my original map so it's 2 by 3 alright so go 2 by 3 so we have retained that same aspect alright so what I want to do here is I'm gonna click and drag this into my length map I'm gonna put it as an instance and I'm going to render out so you guys can see what exactly is happening here. And as soon as this is finished, we can see that we got a result, albeit might not be the exact result we wanted it, because basically we wanted to have an inverted option where this is not covered by the fur and everything else is covered but that's a very easy thing to fix all you have to do is just scroll down to where it says output in your map and just click on invert that is going to make the black white and the white black so again let's re-render and now we can see we have a whole different ballpark to play in as you can see we have all of these trends are keeping the color from the diffuse map and anything in the middle it's basically flat and there are no strands so that is when you use the length map so you can use this for a plethora of different effects now the next thing is controlling the thickness the same way as you were controlling the the seamless mask or the length map for example, for the thickness map, I want to show you guys how you can uh, better see this. So I'm going to go ahead and from here I'm going to choose, let's go with a gradient. So a gradient mask. And I'm going to click it here. So it's an instance so we can see what we have. So basically it's something like this. So from what we saw previously, the monochrome works but, uh, more or less by just watching the black and the white. So it means that whatever is white is going to take the full value of the thickness. What is black is going to take zero. Now, if I render out an image, we should see a gradual transition in the thickness from the top to the bottom or vice versa. We're going to see what, what it is. So render. So as you can see, it from uh, goes from this side towards this side and it's as it's getting closer to the edge the thickness is simply getting so thin that we can barely see them so just so you guys can see it better i'm going to go ahead and flip this for 180 degrees and now the black is on the bottom as you can see when it's zero the black is up 180 degrees rotation the black is down so now we should see it better on this side which is closer to the camera so again we can now better see this result if we zoom in, we can see that as we approach the end here, we barely have any fibers and we're uh, 
as we're getting to the middle we have more and at the edge we have full thickness of the fibers so you have even more control as you can control the thickness with a uh, custom map then you have another one for the gravity which more or less is giving you the idea from what we saw it's going to control how uh, all of these fibers are like bent downwards so if we go ahead and take the gravity just take the gradient and put it to here so just make it a copy here and i'm going to clear so we don't want to have a thickness now the gravity is supposed to give us a different result again re-render well actually i stopped the render in the middle because i noticed that i have set a value of zero for the gravity so it wouldn't make any difference so i'm going to change the gravity to minus uh, one this should give us some gravity or minus two maybe yeah all right so again re-render and we can see the difference that does. So from what we saw previously and with the addition of these maps to help us with have more control over our um, model, we can see that V-Ray Fur gives us quite a bit of control over how our end result is going to look like. Now, in this case, I used a simple rug but you can use a plethora of different maps to get a lot of or not a lot of endless uh, possibilities and you have endless variations of how you like your rugs to look like you can choose to have one diffuse then you uh, mix it up with a different uh, direction map different uh, bent direction map different thickness all around and you're gonna end up with having a lot of different interesting results so if you guys are still watching don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button as it really does help a lot and that would be it for this video so you guys take care and I'll see you all in the next video